Welcome back. You know, I've addressed mutual funds several times over the last couple of years, and usually I do it in reverse order where I kind of talk about it. I want to talk a little bit more, you know, getting into some information that might be out there. But the first thing when we talk about a mutual fund is we want to understand what the difference between a stock and a mutual fund is. Uh, and again, many of you probably already know this, but a stock represents one individual company. And a mutual fund represents a bundle of companies. And then you've got all these different sorts of mutual funds out there that are categorized by how big the companies are inside of that mutual fund. So let's say you had Coca-Cola represented a stock, and let's say it was selling for $40. And then you had a mutual fund called the Beverage Company of America. That also sold for $40. But inside there was Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, and maybe if 20 or 30 other beverage companies existed would be in there. And that should give you a little diversification off of risk. So lots of people use mutual funds, and so when you're doing it on your own, I think there's some important factors I want to make sure you as an investor kind of are armed with. So let's take a look at the first uh, performance data sheet, and you can pretty much get this anywhere from Morningstar to even just Googling it. And so basically a chart like this would show you what is your performance, not individually, uh, but also in line with what everyone else in your category is doing. So when we first look at this fund, and you look at all the way to the right, its performance in 2019 was 34.13%. If you scroll down two spots, you see a minus 2.26%. Um, that is how much less it performed from the S&P 500. But if you go to the one in between, it says it outperformed the category by 2.2%. So what that means is this is a large cap growth. There's 1,360 funds in that category. This fund was better than the norm by 2.23%. And the best way to look at it finally, uh, and this is really what you should just go to, is that percentile rank where you can see it says 33 and then underneath it 1,360. What that's ultimately saying is, is this ranked in the 33 percentile, the top third, of all 1,300 funds. So it was probably in a, about the top 400 funds in that category. So again, you could have 40% return, but you want to make sure you're doing better than the average in the category. Now we move on to the next factor. Uh, and this sheet's pretty important. They all are. But the first thing you want to look at is you can get a risk versus the category. So even though mutual, um, let's say, large cap is riskier than bonds, inside large cap, there's risk in there between those 1,300 funds. So if you look here top left, you see that this fund had the lowest risk out of four categories, and for return, had the fourth highest return. That's an excellent striking distance. Lower risk, better return. Um, and then let's look at our right side here. Market volatility it says capture ratios, something called upside and downside. And very easily put, this is how it performs in good markets and bad markets. So on the upside, where it says 111, that means that if the market averaged 10, this would actually average 11.1%. On the downside, if we took the last, call it, five years, when the markets went down, if the markets went down minus 10 on all negative days, this would have lost only 7.3. Again, we look at a good, healthy striking distance of making more than the average, losing less than the average, and that's how these two ratios can really be helpful. Um, our third important factor is fees on the next page. Um, and if you see here, this is the same exact fund, and in the expense ratio, make sure you're aware. There's, these are the same investments, six different classes, and as you can see, they range anywhere from 0.55 to over 1.5%. So be aware of what you're buying. Sometimes you're limited on the classes that you can buy inside 401ks would certainly be cheaper than on your own. So I just hopefully those factors will help when you're evaluating what mutual fund to choose. When we return, we will take a question on wills. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Uh, we have a viewer question. Jane from Providence asks, I recently had my will updated and I'm leaving all my assets to my children. Do I need to do anything else to make sure they get all my possessions? Again, a big depends question. However, when you think of a will, wills actually take care of kind of the household items. They don't take care of the big items. So to break this down very quickly, and again, this should really be a question you'd ask an estate planner uh, or someone who does your will, is number one, for IRAs and life insurance, your beneficiaries will supersede anything you ever put in your will. So whoever you have there, if you had an ex-spouse, make sure you change it. If you had a child you don't want to have it, make sure you change it. 
And secondly, if you have non-IRA accounts, such as brokerage accounts, and you don't have a trust, you can name beneficiaries by asking your bank or your brokerage firm for a transfer on death, TOD, and you can name your beneficiaries in there. So make sure the will does not capture anything. If anything, it's whatever's not covered somewhere else, the will will then kick in. Thank you for joining us this week. We hope you have a great week. Look forward to seeing you next week.